we are going to start this one by attaching the window because it goes underneath the roof trim rather than the roof trim first so um, prepare your window in the same way we did for the front um, you're going to cut out your internal uh, parts of the window trace around snip up into the corners fold them out um, and fold the um, the uh, the outside edges in as well half an inch and then um, stitch these um, uh, squares to your window pane so once that's all ready then we're going to lay the fabric on top of the pattern piece and get the right placement for this and then we're going to pin and stitch it on once you've got your window pinned on you can then stitch around the outside we're going to do it the same as we did with the other uh, windows where we're going to cut away this outside edge. Um, do take care uh, to check your window placement. It is quite high to the top of the building and the reason for that is that the opposite side of this is the kitchen and the kitchen benches um, take up most of the bottom half of the kitchen. So the window is quite high to allow to have the sink etc under the window so if you want to move the placement go ahead but do just double check it on what you're going to have on the other side of this window so that then it can be see-through um, if your table is backed up against a wall um, you could just skip this whole back section and do a plain piece of fabric it is up to you if you're going to have your table out in the middle of the room they might want to have something on the back your call This is now attached, stitched on. We're going to do the same thing as before, pull the fabric away from the plastic and then we're going to carefully snip in and trim out this back window from behind the, um, behind the window panes. So I know these bits of fabric are quite large and it's quite tricky, but try and make sure you lay this flat and really keep the fabric away while you are cutting. There we go, that is now cut out. Next up, we're going to do the roof trim the same way we did the roof trim on the first side. Um, trace the seam line, stitch along the seam line, snip into each of the bits that are going up, and then either trim a notch or use your pinking shears to trim along there. And then turn it all through and um, uh, give it a good press and a top stitch. Now, I like to sew as efficiently as I can, so I'm gonna show you what I do. You do not have to do this in this order. You can do it in the exact order it is per the tutorial if you want, uh, but this is what I do, is I've now got the top of the drain, the two pieces together. Um, I'm not using, I'm using the same fabric as lining here, and I've put them right sides together and stitched all the way around. Next, I'm gonna snip that, clip the corners, turn it through and press so that it's ready to go on the pattern. The same with the drain pipe, I've stitched that together all the way around. I'm going to um, notch or pinking shear into these corners, trim these, these uh, clip these corners off as well, make a, um, a cut in the back, turn it through, press it, and that'll be ready to go on too. And then we've got the top of the pot plant. Um, these are all of the little flowers I have uh, glued and um, uh, stitched them on and then now I'm going to get the lining piece of this and I'm going to stitch all the way around, clip it, turn it through, making sure to go into all of these corners like we normally do and then the pot for the pot plant, the same thing. I've, um, uh, I've stitched around and now I'm um, going to clip these corners, um, um, give it a little notch or pinking shear, a little snip in or pinking shear along the sides and then turn it through. So all of those will then be ready to attach to the back wall uh, once I've done that with. And that's, I really like doing it in that way because I'm kind of being most efficient with my time at the machine versus my time at the at the iron. But if you like to slow, so slow and um, do it in all of the exact order, do check the pattern and it'll go through each of these pieces one by one. Now you want to get your um, uh, your turned through pot for your pot plant and place it as per the pattern markings or where you want it. Stitch it on and then we're going to do the same with the turned through 
um, plant for the pot plant. So um, stitch this one on first, and then you've got your turned through one, which you're going to stitch, um, stitch. You're going to attach directly above it. Once you've attached your pot, then stitch on the plant above. I've placed mine so that it's not quite touching the window. I don't want that to overlap, but you could overlap it or place it wherever you would like. It's up to you. We are now adding the mouse. I have peeled my backing off and stuck the mouse on. Uh, what I would suggest you do is pin your drain pipe onto the pet onto the wall before you put down your mouse that way if you want the tail poking into the drain pipe like so you can um, put that in there um, i'm now going to either machine or hand stitch the little features on the mouse um, and you can do the same now and then what we're going to do next is stitch this drain pipe on so this is the same um, method we've used before we've turned it through and then we're stitching around the outside um, when you get to the top, well not when you get to the top, I wanted to show you something that I had done on my top, just in case you do this anywhere. I accidentally cut the wrong side of my drain to turn it through, which is why I should have done a fabric and a lining versus two the same, but you know, live and learn. Um, and what I've done to fix this, uh, because it was a great big hole and I don't have enough of the grey to cut it out again, um, so instead, what I've done is I slipped a little bit of double-sided interfacing in behind. I've put it so that the glue is facing down. I've pressed it on. I've waited for it to um, waited for it to dry. Put my finger inside, peeled the backing off, and then I've um, carefully laid this out on top um, and um, and pressed it down so that then we've got a really um, it's about as good as I'm going to get for fixing that. So. Um, that's a little tip for you if you happen to do that. Hopefully you don't and you do use a different um, lining and main fabric. Uh, now the next thing to do is to stitch on your drain pipe and then after that we're going to take our, um, the top of the drain and we're going to place it on top of the, um, on top of the drain pipe afterwards. Here is my mouse again, same little straight stitches and I've done it as per the pattern piece with little um, little lines in the different places to give him um, or her a body shape. So I've stitched my drain pipe on. Now the top of the drain pipe, um, you can do it so that it is right up near the top so that it's touching the top of the back. Um, I'd quite like to see the edge because the stitch line is going to run along about here. So I've positioned mine slightly further down. It's up to you where you would put yours. Um, once you've positioned it where you want, then we're going to stitch that on. So I've stitched on my um, drain pipe here. After that, I want to get my little spider and I'm going to hang them as far up or down as you would like. Um, I think I'm probably going to go about there. Now, um, what I find for this is that it is easier to use your sewing machine for the, uh, for the, the stitch line down. Um, to get, I'm going to go back and forwards a couple of times to make it a really obvious stitch line. Um, or you could use hand embroidery thread, but it's up to you. It's just a straight line though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where I want the the spider to go. Um, so that he's going to go, or she is going to go about there. And I'm now going to draw a stitch line, or I'm now going to stitch a stitch line that's parallel to this drain pipe from the top to here. And then I will glue my spider on over the top afterwards and stitch in the little spider happy face once they're stitched in. So um, once you've done this, uh, then draw a stitch line down and pop your spider on. That's stitched down, so I'm going to pop my spider on the bottom now. My spider's on, I'm going to draw some little facial features on him now. This is how I've done the embroidery for the little... Um, uh, spider this black felt I'm finding really furry and it just kind of keeps um, furring up so maybe not the best choice in fabric um, um, I don't know why it's different felt to the other one but I've just stitched around all the way around to the little bits to make it stand out and then put a face on again I've used plain straight little stitches but you might have others you prefer I've now glued on my dog um, if you've got a dog that has distinguishing features like spots maybe or sp i don't know stripes i'm not quite sure what so if you've got a dog that looks a particular way you could do it like your own dog um once if you're following along with me though pop the dog on and then we're going to attach the the dog muzzle the two eyes and the nose 
and then we're going to hand stitch or machine stitch in um, the leg lines etc and the, the edge of the ears and the face. I've put the muzzle down first, then the nose, then the eyes. Um, and then the last thing is to then stitch in the little smiley face and make these other little lines by hand. This is my embroidery on my dog. Whoops, I've also got the hair and thread on it. Um, I've uh, done these little lines here. This is actually white, but against the grey background, it looks a little bit, um, a little bit grey. And then I have um, stitched the eyes on and give them a little face. Right, this is the finished back. Um, you've got the drain pipe, the spider, the little mouse and the dog in the pot plant. Moving on to the garage, we are going to now do the roof trim. Start with the roof trim exactly the same as we have done on the other, other exterior pieces. Next up, apply the grass and you'll find there is a grass piece on both the left and the right bottom. The garage is going in the middle in between these two pieces. Now we're going to assemble the inside of the garage, which has the car on it. So we'll start with the car. This is the windscreen. Pop the steering wheel on in the same way that we do normally. Um, you can put it on either side of the car. So whether you are in a country which drives on this side of the road versus that side of the road, pop it on whichever one is accurate for you. Then you want to place your lining and your main for your windscreen right sides together, stitch around, clip a hole in, turn it through and press like so. Next up, we're going to pop all the details directly onto the car piece. So I've got a blue car here and you can see um, that is it there. I'm going to stitch on, making sure my raw edges are tucked under, I'm going to stitch on my windscreen here first. After the windscreen, we're then going to attach the badge, the headlights, each of the indicators and the grill. Now for the grill, you can optionally stitch lines in a different colour so that it looks like a, um, a grill. And then on the bottom here, this is going to be covered up by the bumper, so um, I haven't been quite as cautious with that. I've just been neat with the top. Next, we're going to attach it all. If you get the car and place it onto the garage interior where you want it and just loosely pin it on so that you can still lift the edges up, then you're going to want your wheels, your car mirrors and your bumper. So we're going to start with the wheels. Uh, what I'm going to do is put the bumper roughly where it's going to go and you can check the positioning on the pattern piece. And then I'm going to put my wheels and I'm going to insert them according to what it says on the pattern piece just under the bumper. Now you can do it entirely by the pattern piece, which I do recommend putting them on first by the pattern piece, but then make sure to put the bumper back over the top just to double check you've got the placement correct. And then you can stitch these on. If you want to do little tread lines on here, um, do them next uh, before we then add the rest of the pieces. So right now you're just going to put the wheels on and then do any decorative stitching you want to do on those. I've done some stitching here on my tires to show some thread, some um, tread, tire tread. This is where the bumper is going to go. The car is still pinned on. Next, after that, um, you want to um, iron or st and or stitch on or both your wing mirrors of the car. This should still just be pinned on. The wing mirrors do just um, go slightly underneath the car so that you don't see a gap there. Once you've done that, we can then stitch on the car piece itself. After you've stitched on the car, that should be completely attached now. Next, you want to get the bumper, got a few threads here, and uh, place that uh, where it needs to go. And then we are going to stitch that on. Uh, the bumper detail is um, an iron-on piece that goes on over the top after the bumper. Lastly, we put these little um, bumper brackets, bumper detail, I don't know, the bit that holds the bumper on, um, pop those on and then your car is then um, complete and we're going to assemble this interior part and then the garage door. When you are then ready, place the um, in garage interior right side together with um, the garage interior lining, stitch around, make a cut in the back, clip the corners, turn it through, give it a press. Now pop this aside for a bit because we're going to work on the garage door next and then we will attach this together with the garage door. Next I've got the garage door fabric here. What I'm doing is I've um, stitched big 
uh, long lines down the third points. I've, well, I've taken off half an inch seam allowance and then I've divided it into three and stitched a vertical line all the way down. And then I've taken off the half inch seam allowance at the top and the bottom, stitched halfway and then stitched halfway again. When I mean taken off, I just marked it with a pin. I don't mean I trimmed it, it's obviously still on there. Um, and what that's done is given me a grid of 12 um, boxes. And then now I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch inside each box, obviously leaving the half inch seam allowance. Um, about, I don't know, half an inch from, in from the edge, I'm not too sure yet. I'm gonna just give it a try and see what it looks like. This is just my own little design. I really love those garage doors um, that have all of the blocks on them. Um, I'm not quite sure what the name of the style is, but they're the ones which you use remote control and it just goes up like that and then down like that. We had one when I was a kid um, and so I want it to look a bit like that garage door. You can leave your garage door completely plain. You could um, use patterned fabric. You could put any design on it you liked, um, but that is what I'm going to do for mine. This is my finished garage door. You can see my seam allowance here is wider, ready to turn that under, uh, turn it for it to um, have a half inch seam allowance when we stitch the two together. And you can see I've done these little squares, which is the look I was going for. So however you want to decorate your garage door, do that now. Once you've um, stitched around the edges and pressed all of this, it's all turned through and all finished. We're now ready to attach the door straps. Now the door straps, you may have prepared at the same time you did the front door. Um, if so, you can grab them now. If not, we're going to prepare them in the exact same way. You fold them in half, um, finish them, turn them through, and then put the hook and loop tape on. Um, and I think that's a three inch long strip of hook and loop tape. Um, then you want to pin them. We're going to do exactly the same thing, measuring two and a half inches from the edge, two and a half inches from the edge. The both sets of straps are facing down. The furry side is underneath, the scratchy side is on top, but they are both facing downwards. You can see they're both pointing in that same direction. And just before you stitch them on, just double check. Grab the end of it, roll it up, and then just double check that it does do up. So that is the hook and loop tape there matching. You don't want it to be like that where it doesn't match. So there we go. Check that it matches and then um, give these a little stitch on using a quarter inch seam allowance so that it's inside the seam allowance. We've got the interior um, garage interior and I've laid it flat onto the wall piece and you can see that I've pinned that all the way on but I've left the top kind of only a little bit pinned and I've just uh, flipped the roof trim out of the way. The next thing I'm going to do is get my garage door piece, if the hook and loop tape will stop sticking to my clothing, and I'm going to place it over the top of the garage interior uh, so that it is um, uh, in line with it. And then I'm going to take the garage door and I'm going to flip it up so that it is now facing up away. So this is my garage interior here and my garage door is flipped up here away from the wall. I'm then going to take my garage door and I'm going to slip it half an inch under the top of the garage interior. And what that's going to do is just hide to this raw edge here and attach it on. And then that way we can flip it back down and it is then attached. Now, when you do that, when you go to then, whoops, um, when you go to then pin this on, as you pin along, make sure that the hook and loop tape are both flipped up. You don't want either of them poking down underneath that garage interior, otherwise we won't want to, we won't be able to use them. So pin that all the way along and then stitch that um, about, well, it, technically you want to do it one eighth of an inch from the edge because it's top stitching, but that'll be quite tricky through all of these layers. So I would use um, about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. You just want to make sure that these are flipped out before you, before you do that. Um, and you're just literally stitching straight along here. I would back stitch at either end to really secure it and also go um, over a couple of times over these um, uh, over the straps so that you know that they're um, going to uh, be secure. And 
Yes, and then but and before you do that, I would also just fold this back garage door back down and just check that it does indeed um, cover the garage interior like you're expecting it to. So you've got everything um, exactly where it needs to be. So once you've stitched along this top line here, you want to stitch down both um, both sides and across the bottom of the garage door. Um, over the garage interior and um, you can see I've uh, obviously cut my garage door or I've stitched it ever so slightly smaller than the interior they should be the same size I've just centered it um, <laughs> but um, yours should match don't be thrown off by mine not <laughs> I've obviously cut it slightly wonky but it will still work so um, uh, stitch that on and then lastly to finish off the garage door you want to flip the garage door down put the straps up Give it a good press so that um, it's all um, neat at the top and then you're going to stitch all the way along this top. Leave these top straps up so that they are not constrained. The ones underneath will obviously get stitched but leave these ones at the top out. Once you stitch down each side of the garage door and along the bottom, then we're going to flip the garage door down like so. So it was up here. You're then flipping it down um, as if it's um, closed, but leave these two pieces, uh, the two um, straps up the top and then stitch along this top edge here. So don't go too close to the edge or you could um, uh, kind of roll off it. It is quite a big lump and be careful as you go over these bits here where there is um, quite a lot of fabric. I went slowly and um, used the hand crank on my machine as I went over here because they were really quite thick. Uh, that's one way to make sure that you don't, um, uh, you don't, um, uh, you don't uh, break your needle. <laughs> right, once you um, have done all of that, then what I recommend you do, is garage door closed, is take the garage door and just roll it up so that it's out of the way. Um, we're gonna, later when we do assembly, we don't wanna have um, this then accidentally getting caught in things. Um, or you could pin it down, whatever you prefer. I'm gonna roll it up because then it makes it look nice and neat. So there we go, garage door is now complete and you can flap your um, roof trim back down. Next up, we're adding the caterpillar. If you start with the back body piece and then overlap each oval um, a little bit um, to make it fit, um, the length that you want it to be and then the circle is the face and that goes on last. Once you've um, attached these you can do any detail stitching you want, pop a face on, um, antennae, whatever type of caterpillar you'd like it to be. To do the lights if you pop the light bulb on first and then the three long um, uh, struts that go over the top uh, what I recommend you do when you do this is that the lights should be at the same level on the both the left and the right side of the garage. Um, do just double check against the pattern placement or alternatively um, you can measure from your top and make sure the measurement from the top to the top of the light is the same and from the garage to there and then that way they'll look nice and even on your finished tent. Next up pop the, strip, the struts along the top and the bottom of the light. To finish the light, add the bottom piece, the top piece, and then also the strut that goes along the top piece. And then what I do recommend for these, especially if you've used felt, is to definitely stitch along each of these because as you can see, this here, the felt um, come, can kind of uh, separate out into layers um, and it's stuck quite securely, but you can see this end bit here is starting to come off. So if you want it to last for many, many years, um, give that a little stitch on the top. To do a little ladybird, similar to the caterpillar, pop the body down, pop the head on top, and then add any little legs, antenna, and face you would like. For my wee little ladybird or ladybug, depending on where you live, I've done it again as per the pattern piece, some little lines, they're just straight. These dots on the back I've done as little French knots. My French knots are not the best, um, but I think they work pretty well. It makes it stand out a little bit of 3D. It's kind of cute. And then I popped a face on and given it some, is they called antennas? Um, anyway, whatever they're called. Um, lots of little straight lines for these ones here. For my caterpillar, I've done straight lines around each of all of these circles so that it kind of makes it stand out a wee bit, plus the little legs and the face, the, the face detail here. Again, that's all little straight lines I've done for those. Here's our finished garage with the garage door down. You've got the cute little caterpillar and the 
um, ladybird. Then the garage door will roll up to show you the car. Well, you roll it up, it won't roll itself up. All right, now we're gonna um, uh, add the window onto the side um, part of the tent, uh, the side window box in exactly the same way that we did the back and the front. So um, uh, take your window piece, take your window piece, cut out the bit in the middle, uh, draw the outside around, clip, 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 fold it all out, put the plastic on, stitch it in place on the front of the wall and then cut out the fabric behind and then we have our see-through window. Once you've done that, take your roof trim, again create it in exactly the same way you did the one for the front and the back and we're going to attach it stitching using a quarter inch seam allowance across the top of the side piece. After stitching the roof trim on in the same way we did before, then we're going to come down and we're going to attach the window box underneath the window. So for this, um, it's uh, the placement is marked on the pattern piece, but it is um, about just over an inch underneath the actual window. It's not touching the bottom of the window. That's where the greenery is going to go in between. Um, and it's assembled in exactly the same way, uh, turned it, um, uh, so the fabric and the lining um, stitched around, turned through, and then stitched around to attach it. Once your window box is attached, then pop the greenery on. I've placed my greenery, this is the top of my window box here, I've placed it so that it is overlapping both sides, as if it's kind of spilling over, um, but you can put it slightly uh, further off if you would like. Again, as everything on this, so it's completely up to you and where you would prefer to have it. With the flowers, you can have them overlapping the windows if you want, or you can keep them off the window. I don't want to have to, because I'm ironing, I don't want to have to try not to melt the plastic, so I've kept mine off. Um, so uh, glue or iron and then stitch these on, and then they've all got little um, uh, optional embroidery details. So um, I'm going to do those by hand, and I'm going to stitch the stems for these little tulips as well by hand. Um, so basically finish these however you would like. For my window box, again, lots of straight little stitches. Where I needed to have a stem, I've added the stems in in a, um, in a brown fabric and I've just done straight lines for them. And then I've drawn little swirls. Some of them I've done in straight lines and then the purple ones I've done in zigzaggy lines. And I've actually used the same purple thread across all the flowers, which I quite like, but you can do it however you would prefer. Next, we're going to do the sunflowers, um, stitch and or glue on the sunflower stem, the same as we did the flowers on the front side um, to uh, lay the grass down and just, or sorry, the letterbox post, lay the grass down and just check that you've got this bottom bit going where you want it so that the base is hid behind a bit of grass. Um, and then obviously check at the top where you want your sunflower. I've placed mine as per the pattern pieces and um, I've put them on both sides. So make sure to, uh, to do both of the sunflowers the same if you're doing both of them now. Next, pop the largest layer of the sunflower head down and that's on both the sunflowers. Next, put the smaller layer, that's layer two of the sunflower on top, then the sunflower center. And lastly, the leaves on both sides. And that's the same for both of the sunflowers on both sides of this wall. Then what you wanna do is do any um, hand or machine embroidery. So I'm gonna put a line down the middle of my leaves um, and I might um, stitch some of this on. Um, something cool I've seen as well is putting little French knots in the middle of this to make it look all bobbly. For each of my sunflowers, I've done some French knots in the middle to give it a little bit of, um, I'm not sure if you can see those very well because they're dark, just to give it a little bit of a 3D-ness and look, make it look like there's lots of seeds there. Um, and then I've stitched around the outside with a contrasting thread because I found the yellow against the yellow against the yellow <laughs> was a little bit much and hard to see. And I've put some stitch lines on my leaves. Then we want to put the grass all the way along the bottom, covering up these sunflower stems um, at the base of them. Next, we're going to add this cute little snail. You can put them going up a grass blade if you want, or just wherever you would like in the grass. Um, put the body on first, and then we're going to attach the shell afterwards, and then do the little, any little facial features and things you want after that. I've attached this little shell. I'm going to now draw a little swirl on there um, uh, with embroidery thread. 
This is my cute little snail. Again, just straight little lines around to show the detail. Next is the hedgehog. The easiest way I find to do this is to assemble it all on the ironing board or wherever you're um, gluing or sewing and then um, remove the body off and then press or stitch these on and then that way these are um, underneath so you can hide these edges but they are um, also secured in the right place to then add the body on top. Once you've put these bottom bits on then go ahead and pop the top bit on and you can sew on any um, and details for the face and nose etc. This is now all glued on and it's ready for some stitching. For my hedgehog I've done little straight lines again around each of the pieces. For the eye um, I've done um, some various embroidery that's resulted in a little loop coming out so I'm going to have to stitch that down so that is that um, uh, that doesn't get pulled away uh, but that's just I didn't do a French knot there I just did um, uh, like a, I think you call it a satin stitch. Um, those of you who are hot on the embroidery will be able to comment and tell us exactly what it's called. But where you just go um, very closely next to each other and you're just going down through the fabric, underneath, up over the top, down underneath, up over the top like that. And you're just kind of going, making little lines next to each other like so in a small space that makes it look like it is fully filled in. Um, because I uh, find that... Um, uh, my embroidery isn't the best and I've also used a regular thread rather than embroidery thread when I find that that doesn't completely cover it I'll then change directions and do a satin stitch in the other direction to give it a really solid look. The first bit to attach for the bee is the wings um, and I've popped the wings on but I've also just laid the body over first to check that I'm happy with the position so um, wings on first and then body next. Next up is the body and you want to place the body so it's overlapping the wings. Then lastly we want to add the stripes to the bee. My felt doesn't like how thin I've cut it so it's starting to fall apart so I'm going to then embroider that by hand to finish that off and then I can sweep all of this fluff away and then I'm going to make a little trail by hand as well. Now my adorable little bumblebee here, I've stitched his face on and gone around him to make him stand out against the yellow because this whiteness yellow wasn't really standing out. And then I've also just, I've used, I think it's called a running stitch where I just go down, under, up, over, down, under, up, over, like that. So just running the needle up and down, up and down, up and down to get this line round in a circle and up here. Now, if you um, decide to do this and you use a very long piece of thread so that you can go continuously all the way along, um, I have done it here using a... Um, um, where I've looped the thread through the needle and back and tied a knot at the end and then that way there's two lines of thread all the way along to make it stand out but I didn't want to have a knot in the middle so I used a really long piece of thread to do this. I tied a knot here and then I tied a knot up here and the thing to be cautious of um, is laying it flat so that you don't end up with it pulled when you're doing it across a really long distance like this because the thread is much um, looser on the fabric than it is when you're doing lots of small stitches like you do, we have done in other places. This is the finished side window box. Um, we've got the buzzy bee, the snail, the hedgehog, the sunflowers and all of those other flowers in the window box. 